The brand new M1 iPad Pro promises to be a powerful and portable content consumption and creation machine. But what are some things that you can get to make it a little bit better? Let's find out. It's got a very expensive screen on it. Don't want to break it. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad. And if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So I love every time we get a big new product release, I like making a my favorite accessories video because they're just a whole lot of fun. So today I'm going to walk you through some of my favorite accessories and what I would recommend for the brand new M1 iPad Pro. Now, the thing I'm going to say right up front, consider this both the 12.9 inch and 11 inch versions. If we're talking about a case, generally you can get a case for both sizes, but I won't be making specific videos for each. I tried doing that over the last week, I'm sorry. We darn near burned ourselves out from that. So just, this is all encompassing. Now the first accessory I'm gonna recommend is actually the one that I like the most. And I actually think it takes the iPad and turns it into more than just a tablet. And that's the Magic Keyboard. You can see here that I've got the white version. Now I'm not actually sure how clean this version is gonna stay uh, as we start using this. I've used the black version on my iPad Pro 11 inch 2020 and it's been fantastic. The keys, like if you wanna type notes, if you wanna type scripts, if you wanna get productivity work done on an iPad, this is the easiest, the most convenient way. It really takes the iPad Pro and the iPad Air, depending on the size of the keyboard we're talking about, and turns it into a monster machine. You get one of the best trackpads in the business. And let me tell you something about Apple trackpads. There are actual laptops that don't have as good a trackpads in this, even though, I mean, compared to like a MacBook, this isn't the largest trackpad in the world. However, the size that it is, it's amazing. The keys on the keyboard are all perfectly spaced out. This is almost exactly like typing on a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air. And we've all heard how much I really enjoy liking those. I think I say it in like every single video that's ever been made on the channel forever. Keys are great. You can hear here. Apple makes the best keyboards in the business. Don't at me. I'll fight you in the comments. I'll fight you on Twitter. I'll fight you from the seas and the oceans. Apple makes the best keyboard. So yes, I would highly, highly recommend this. The problem is though, if you're looking at getting an iPad and this is the base model 12.9 inch iPad, you've already spent a thousand bucks. Maybe you don't want to spend 300 or more additional dollars on a keyboard. So there are some things that you could use to get the same functionality without needing to buy this specific thing. This is the most convenient way to do it because it's all in one. It's already part of the iPad. It protects the iPad and it's got an additional USB-C port built into it for charging. But if you don't need any of that stuff, you can get the same thing with a simple stand and keyboard solution. So this is a keyboard from a company called Omaton. It's not built the best. The construction is not great, but it was only like 10, 15 bucks. So if this breaks, you can just get another one. Um, you can see here it is made of plastic. Can you, can you hear that? It's not the best plastic, but for what it is, it's actually a pretty comfortable keyboard and you can pair it via Bluetooth. You just turn it on, press the connect button. It connects instantly to your iPad. You can see how well this works as a keyboard. The keys are spaced out very well. They're not as clicky or as nice feeling as the Magic Keyboard, but they do feel pretty darn good. They're kind of like a combination between like an Apple style keyboard and a mechanical keyboard. So if you're like, a, if you're a person that likes some clicks, you can hear it. it does have some clickiness to it, but this is really nice. You can see how thin and small it is. This will fit in any backpack or any space. You don't have to worry about its size, but combine that an iPad by itself is not very useful. You need something. And this is a stand from a company called a noser that I just recently purchased. One of the things that I like, especially if I'm going to be using an iPad for productivity, I need it up and I need it back. So what this is, it's a little travel stand that you can throw in your backpack. You see, it's got the little rubber feet here to keep it from moving. You just pop it open, you set your iPad in it, and you get a lot of articulation in how you want the iPad to actually be displayed. You can lean it back a little bit, you can lean it forward a little bit, get it to where you want it. I like it right about there. And then we've got our keyboard and this 12.9 inch, this screen is so good. I'm used to the MacBook Air that has 400 nits of brightness and it's a nice screen, but this has up to a thousand nits of brightness plus 1500 if you're viewing HDR content. This screen is beautiful. Okay, enough about the screen, but yeah. So this kind of combination will get you most of the functionality out of the Magic Keyboard, but there's also something you're gonna need. You may notice that if you don't wanna always touch the screen, we have a trackpad on the Magic Keyboard. Well, in this case here, we have a handy dandy mouse. We talk about this mouse all of the time. This is the Logitech M350 Pebble. I know you all are probably sick of hearing about this because you're like, Gary, why do you keep talking about this mouse? But if an accessory is good, 
I don't see a reason to continue talking about other accessories. If the accessory works, that's what matters. What I like about the Logitech Pebble is it can do both wireless and Bluetooth. So we've got it paired to the, you, get, whoop, you can see that we've got it paired via Bluetooth to the iPad right now. So right here, you can see we can easily click here on notes and get back to work, Gary. Got to argue with myself and tell myself to get back to work even on the video as we're making it. This combination together is one of the smallest, most portable get work done kits. And look, you get a tiny mouse, you get a tiny keyboard, and you get a tiny stand, and all of this will run you much less than that Magic Keyboard. Again, the Magic Keyboard is all of this in one, but if you are trying to save some money, I would recommend these three things. Now, I already showed you this case. This is a case that I've been recommending, I think for the last year, since the last iPad Pro came out. This is a case from Native Union that I bought on the Apple website. And you can see here, you always got all of these accessories that you're gonna have with you. You need some way to organize them. And I have all sorts of these tech bags, but this Native Union one has been one of my favorite for one main reason, build quality. I'm telling you, if you're going to buy bags or you're going to buy kit that is tailored, you always got, I know this is boring. Everybody's like, Gary, you're always talking about stitching and stuff. I don't care. Show me the gadgets. Stitching is very important. You can see here it's not double stitched, but the stitching on this bag is very nice. You can see it's got a, a water resistant taper around the zipper and these zippers are so, they've got such a good bite. These are not the highest quality zippers on the market. These are not YKK zippers. Yes, I am quite partial to YKK. They don't sponsor the videos, but I feel like I talk about them all the time. I used to make my own, I used to tailor my own bags. And so I have quite a partial to YKK zippers. Inside of this, you can see, we kind of just have stuff strewn in here for the purpose of the video, but you can see you got a lot of space. You got two main pouches. You got the side over here for like charger stuff. You got another pouch in here. I like tech bags. There's obviously we talk about them all the time. And this is a really nice one because it has a little bit of shape to it. It'll protect your gear. But what's most important is it'll keep all this small stuff from bouncing around and scratching your iPad because the iPad is just one big screen, right? You definitely don't want to scratch it, which I guess I didn't, I don't have one yet. I have not yet purchased a screen protector for this, but always get a screen protector for all of your tech devices. I'm kind of a big proponent of screen protectors. Got them on my iPhone. All of my iPads have it. And shortly I will get a glass screen protector for the iPad Pro. You can get that matte glass screen protector that a lot of people talk about online. I'm not the biggest fan of those. Yes, it's supposed to make them feel more like paper, I don't like, I bought the screen to have a nice, very high quality finish to it. And I like the feel of the glass right now. I don't want to have that matte finish. So I don't necessarily recommend the matte finish, but if you like them, go ahead and get them. And then like the most important accessory that you can get for the iPad Pros of any generation is the Apple Pencil. This is the Apple Pencil Generation 2, which charges just by setting it on top of the iPad. So this will charge it and pair it with your iPad. And then if you're really gonna use this, like the iPad's not necessarily a laptop replacement. We can add all of these accessories to make it kind of like a laptop, but it's really not. It is a dream for designers and artists though. And so you really need to consider the Apple Pencil if you're going to get an iPad. It's kind of like the standard setup, right? You get the keyboard and you get the pencil. The pencil will help so much if you are gonna do drawing, design, all that stuff. I'm not a very good drawer. I'm not a very good designer, but I still have it because it's a very key, it's almost like a required part of the iPad if you really wanna push the iPad as far as it can go. The iPad's battery life is not nearly as good as the MacBook's battery life. So I am gonna recommend you have a charger with you. This is actually my favorite charger of all time. This is a RAF Power 65 watt charger, but you can see here, you you get two power delivery for USB-A, two power delivery for USB-C, and you do need a cable. I didn't bring the cable because it, it doesn't help out. It makes more of a mess on the table than I need, but chargers are very important. And then if you're gonna have something like an iPad, a MacBook, an iPhone, or a wife that has all sorts of charging stuff with you, if you bring a big power brick, you might actually get one of these spots. I'm just saying. I hate only having one device charged up per one wall outlet. So this RAV Power one has one I've been taking with me everywhere. The space on these things, you can get up to two terabytes, but spending $2,500 for a tablet seems kind of crazy to me. So I would also recommend getting some kind of external storage. This is a solid state drive from RAF Power. RAF Power is also not sponsoring this video. I just happened to buy a lot of their stuff. This is a 256 gigabyte version of their solid state drive. You could also get the Samsung T7. But the reason I went with this one for this video, we're not necessarily going to talk about the Samsung today. It just happen to be out. Uh, but I like these because again, iPads are small, they're portable, it's not supposed to replace your laptop. So you probably won't be doing laptop type work from it. You won't need all the same kind of storage functionality out of your iPad that you would need on a MacBook. So I like this one because it's just so small, it pairs with the USB-C. I mean, it's, it takes up, look at that. This is insurance. This is peace of mind. 
This will let you sleep at night knowing that all of your files are backed up and saved with you and you can keep this next to you like in a shirt pocket, a coat pocket, a pants pocket. So let's say somebody steals a bag. You've still got your files. And look how small that is. I might lose something this small though. If you do have a requirement for like big bulk storage, you can get just a normal LC drive or any kind of spinning drive. This is not necessarily as important, but I know a lot of people have started transitioning to iPads for like video editing or photo editing work. And so if you're looking for big bulk storage, yes, I continue to recommend the LaCie hard drives. This is four terabytes. I back up a lot of my stuff on three of these. This is four terabytes. It works great. It has the nice little case. And then when people see these, they'll be like, that person has to be a YouTuber because YouTubers are the ones that are always recommending these, right? Oh, we also, I'm sorry, because of the battery life thing, you also might want an external battery. This one is from a different company. This is from a company called Anker, but everybody makes external batteries. So buy the one that you want. You don't have to buy the battery that I'm talking about today. This is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. It's got USB-C, got USB-A, but external batteries, they're pretty ubiquitous anymore. Just buy the one that you like. I like this one because of how small it is. You'll notice the big key phrase and a lot of what I've talked about today is thin, small, and light. I don't like carrying more stuff than I need. I like having functionality that's small. So you'll see that all of this stuff is small. You'll need cables, so we won't talk about the cables. This is USB-A to micro USB for the keyboard, and this is USB-A to USB-C because everybody else is on USB-C. And we can say that because we're talking about an iPad Pro today. We're not talking about iPhone accessories where you have to be like, oh, and we also need lightning. You might actually also need lightning, but for purposes of this video, that bad boy is charged via USB-C. Mm. Okay, we also have to talk about dongles. Now that we've got Thunderbolt, we have a different set of options when it comes to external dongles. I haven't seen any big companies take advantage of the Thunderbolt yet, so you could continue using, this is a regular old USB-C dongle that works with the previous versions of the iPad, and this will still work, and you can see it's got USB-C, SD card, headphone, HDMI, and USB-A. This is pretty much all you need out of a dongle, especially if it's on a travel machine like the iPad Pro. But now that it's got Thunderbolt, you have a bigger array of accessories that you could use. And as soon as we see some much bigger companies take advantage of that and make some iPad specific Thunderbolt accessories, maybe we'll make a follow up video, but you could use Thunderbolt docks, you could use Thunderbolt dongles. The reason I'm not bringing out my Thunderbolt dock today and the reason I'm not bringing out more of my Thunderbolt dongles is they're, it's not what the iPad's for yet. So I'm looking forward to companies taking advantage of the size and portability of the iPad with some dongles. When those come out, we'll talk more about them. And then if you just have some standard needs, like you need to send it out to a monitor or you need to import some SD cards, here are the Apple branded versions. The more I use the iPad and the more I use the MacBook, the more I prefer to just use the Apple branded first party stuff because it, it just puts my mind more at ease. Is that kind of a tech snob thing to say when you could get a dongle for 15 bucks? Maybe but I would just rather buy it and just feel at ease and feel safer that it's gonna work and it's not gonna mess up my iPad. So consider that. Is this cheaper just to buy these and then be done? Like I bought these once, I use it with all of this stuff. Could just be cheaper than buying a bunch of dongles. And the last thing I wanna talk about is you might wanna play some video games. This screen is beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful screens that I've ever seen. And so this is a controller that I bought for this iPad Pro. It's from a company called 8-Bit Doe. It's their SN30 Pro Plus controller. I'm a kid of the 90s. I grew up playing the Super Nintendo, despite what this says. The Super Nintendo is probably my favorite console of all time. So I got their version of the controller that looks like the Super Nintendo controller. Obviously, it's got dual analog sticks. It's got a second row of shoulder buttons on top. Uh, so it's not exactly like a Super Nintendo button. It was enough nostalgia to get me to buy it. But can you hear all the buttons feel great? Nothing feels too cheap, nothing feels too light. I hate buying controllers when they feel all loosey-goosey and it feels like you're not getting any response. It's also very responsive using it with my iPad Pro. I've been playing some Terraria on it because I'm kind of a big fan of Terraria, the Moon Lord. You know, I've beaten him on computer. I have not yet beaten him on iPad yet, but this controller feels great. It charges via USB-C here on the top or, and this was actually something that I thought was pretty cool. It comes with a rechargeable battery or you can just use standard batteries in the back, which I think is pretty neat. Cause let's say you can't, you don't have time to charge it. You can always just throw in some batteries just like it was back in the day of trying to make sure my Game Boy always had power. But yeah, so these are all of my favorite accessories for the iPad Pro. But what are some of your favorite accessories? I ask this of all of you every time we make an accessory video because I find some of the coolest stuff in the comments that you all leave me below. So let me know in the comments below what are your favorite accessories. And if you like this video, you've seen this, you're like, wow, that iPad Pro 12.9 does look really cool, but Gary, how powerful is it? How does it work for video editing? Well, other Gary, good news. Here's a video right here showing just how well it works as a video editing computer. And you can find that by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.